Imagine a government program so secret that even its name, Kona Blue, has a dark feel to it. Hidden from public scrutiny, buried deep within classified files, it's a story we weren't meant to uncover. For decades, while we speculated on the existence of UFOs, a select few were gathering hard evidence and meticulously documenting wild encounters with UFOs. But why the secrecy? Why has this information remained hidden for so long? What could be so goddamn shocking that even those in power fear telling the fucking truth? Today, we peel back the layers of deception and expose the covert fuckery behind Kona Blue. What I've discovered may just change everything you think you know about what's happening in our skies. For decades, the idea of government UFO investigations has captivated both skeptics and believers alike. Whether dismissed as conspiracy theories or hailed as potential evidence of extraterrestrial life, the question remains, how much does the government really know? From official denials to carefully curated leaks, governments around the world have long kept their research into UFOs under wraps. But with recent disclosures and declassifications, interest in these mysterious files has surged, pushing UFOs back into the spotlight in both media and public debate. At the center of this intrigue lies a lesser known, highly classified program that operated under the radar for years, Kona Blue. While names like Project Blue Book and the Pentagon's UAP Task Force might ring a bell for most UFO enthusiasts, Kona Blue remains shrouded in secrecy, even as it emerges as one of the most pivotal programs in government UFO research. Its very existence challenges everything we think we know about UAPs and the extent of government involvement. Kona Blue wasn't just another bureaucratic project. It represented a concentrated effort by intelligence agencies, scientists, and military officials to investigate UFO phenomena that defied explanation. It wasn't simply about lights in the sky or blurry images on radar screens. Fuck no. It aimed to assess, analyze, and in some cases retrieve potential evidence of unknown technology of non-human intelligence. In the broader context of UFO research, Kona Blue stands out because it signaled a shift in how seriously governments began to take UFO sightings. It wasn't just an issue relegated to fringe wacko communities or sci-fi enthusiasts. It was an issue that posed significant questions about national security, technological superiority, and the unknown capabilities of foreign or even extraterrestrial entities. Kona Blue is a crucial chapter in the evolving narrative of UFO investigation, raising bigger questions about how much governments have kept hidden and what they are still not telling us. There have been several government programs focused on UFO research throughout the years. In 1947, the U.S. government launched its first official investigation into the phenomenon. It was called Project Saucer. It looked into UFO sightings from a renowned pilot named Kenneth Arnold flying near Mount Rainier, Washington. Arnold said he saw nine circular objects flying at high speeds. The investigation never found any credible evidence of alien technology. Shocker. The successor of that project was Project Sign in 1948. Spearheaded by the U.S. Air Force, 
Project Sign aimed to determine whether these unidentified flying objects posed a threat to national security. 243 UFO sightings were investigated under Project Sign. Nearly all of them were determined to be normal objects. Of course they were. Even though early findings strongly suggested that several UFOs could be of extraterrestrial origin, the project was quickly replaced by Project Grudge in 1949, which downplayed the significance of UFO sightings and attributed most cases to misidentified aircraft or natural phenomena. Yeah, like swamp gas. <laughs> However, public interest in UFOs continued to grow, prompting the U.S. Air Force to establish Project Blue Book in 1952. This was the longest-running government investigation into UFOs, operating until 1969. During its 17 years of operation, Project Blue Book collected more than 12,000 reports of UFO sightings. The majority of these were explained as natural phenomena or man-made objects, but a significant amount, 701 cases, remained officially unidentified. Despite the project's significant efforts to debunk everything for <laughs> any reason possible, its final report concluded that UFOs posed no direct threat to national security. This led to the closure of Project Blue Book. Nonetheless, Project Blue Book became synonymous with the government's shitty explanations for UFOs, and its closure did little to quell public curiosity. Well, fuck no! Project Blue Book was pretty much a bullshit hack job anyway. They cleared a fuck ton of cases that shouldn't have been cleared. Their explanations on some would be comical if it wasn't so creepy on the afterthought. Across the Atlantic, other governments also began to take interest in UFOs. The United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense MOD, launched its own investigation in the 1950s, spurred by a series of sightings by military personnel. For decades, the MOD maintained a policy of quietly investigating UFO sightings without public disclosure, culminating in the release of thousands of files in the early 2000s. These documents revealed how seriously the British government took UFO sightings, even though most were eventually dismissed as natural or man-made phenomena. Over the decades, a series of key sightings and events pushed the UFO debate forward. In 1952, UFOs were spotted over Washington, D.C., triggering a scramble among military jets to intercept the unidentified objects. These sightings were witnessed by radar operators, pilots, and ground personnel, leading to a media shitstorm and a forced acknowledgement of extraterrestrial visitors. Then, in 1966, a string of sightings in Michigan led to a congressional investigation into UFOs, signaling that the phenomenon was no longer confined to fringe circles. As the Cold War progressed, both the U.S. and Soviet Union governments kept a close eye on UFO sightings, often concerned that they could be misinterpreted as military threats from rival nations. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, UFO sightings continued to be reported, but they were largely dismissed by authorities as weather anomalies, aircraft, or satellites. <laughs> Typical. It wasn't until the 21st century that UFOs, or UAPs as they're now officially called, returned to the forefront of government attention. In 2007, it was revealed that the U.S. Department of Defense had been running a secret program known as the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, ATIP, tasked with investigating UAPs. This program came to light in 2017 when the New York Times published a report 
detailing encounters between U.S. Navy pilots and unidentified objects that displayed capabilities far beyond our known technology. This revelation triggered a wave of declassified reports and renewed public interest in UFOs. In 2020, the Pentagon formally established the UAP Task Force to investigate unidentified aerial phenomena and assess their potential security threats. In 2021, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence released a much-anticipated report on UAPs, acknowledging that many sightings remain unexplained and urging continued investigation. The Kona Blue case is one of the more enigmatic yet lesser-known government UFO investigations. Unlike other, more publicized programs, Kona Blue operated under a veil of secrecy, and its details have only surfaced in pieces over time. Kona Blue was also researching human consciousness abilities, like telepathic communication, remote viewing, and teleportation. By February 10, 2012, after years of investigation and mounting costs, the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency decided to cancel the Kona Blue program. In their final assessment, the agency concluded that there was a lack of significant findings and useful deliverables. In other words, no UFO was ever recovered or brought in for reverse engineering. <laughs> or so they say. But either way, the government had a program for UFO retrieval and reverse engineering, just in case. So they believed UFOs were real. With no concrete answers and no UFOs to study, Kona Blue was quietly shelved, joining the long list of other government UFO programs that had been discontinued over the years. Then, in July 2023, shit hit the fan. Several government whistleblowers came forward claiming the government has downed UFOs and are reverse engineering them as we speak. Led by David Grush, a U.S. Air Force intelligence officer, he testified at a U.S. House of Representatives hearing. David was someone with clearance on the inside with access to deeply classified information in regards to what the government knows about UFOs and aliens. David said he's seen documents reporting a spacecraft of non-human origin had been recovered by Benito Mussolini's government in 1933 and procured by the U.S. in 1945 with the assistance of the Vatican and the Five Eyes Alliance. David said that people have been threatened and killed in order to keep the program quiet. I pretty much believe it. NASA and the U.S. Department of Defense denied the claims, stating that extraterrestrial life has yet to be discovered and that there is no evidence supporting the claims of such a program. Uh, 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 bullshit! In a testimony given during the hearing with the House of Representatives, Grush repeated several of his claims while under oath. Similar testimonies were also delivered by Ryan Graves, a former U.S. Navy fighter pilot, and David Fravor, a U.S. Navy commander, on their experiences with UFOs. Fast forward to March 8, 2024, in a sort of government rebuttal to the multiple whistleblowers' claims, the All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, Arrow, concluded that there is no evidence the U.S. has reverse-engineered alien spacecraft and denied claims that Washington is hiding off-world technology or extraterrestrial biological material. Analyzing and understanding the historical record on UAPs is an ongoing collaborative effort involving many departments and agencies. Aero officials wrote in an announcement published the day the report was released. To date, 
Arrow has found no verifiable evidence for claims that the U.S. government and private companies have access to or have been reverse engineering extraterrestrial technology, the statement claims. So, who do you believe? The government whistleblowers with every fucking thing to lose by coming out and making such a claim? Or the government program that's supposedly investigating this invasion and saying, meh, there's nothing to see here. Leave me a note down in the comments which one you believe. Then, on April 16, 2024, all hell broke loose. In an odd and strange kind of move, the DOD released a bombshell report admitting they had a program called Kona Blue. A program exactly like what David Grush had described. Kona Blue was a plan for the government to reverse engineer alien technology from recovered UFOs. It was a special access program, which meant it was highly classified and above top secret. It was created with the goal of acquiring, identifying, and reverse engineering what it calls AAVs or Advanced Aerospace Vehicles. Those now fall under the category of what the military calls UAPs and what most normal folks call UFOs. The documents laid out a budget between 12 and 15 million for the first year, 25 million for the second year, and eventually an operating expense of more than 50 million per year thereafter. So about the same amount as NASA spends in a day. The purpose was national security with a goal of accessing recovered advanced technology and determining its threat capability. The program also had goals, including details on plans to reverse engineer any advanced technology and determine whether our adversaries, namely China and Russia, could have access to recovered AAVs. When asked about Kona Blue prior to this, it was shrugged off by officials as ah, crazy rants from UFO conspiracy theorist nuts. And now, it looks like the chickens have come home to roost. Something the government really hates is rearing its ugly head again. The truth. The top scientists at the Department of Homeland Security, Tara O'Toole, the Undersecretary of Science and Technology, approved Kona Blue, so it was taken seriously at high levels. It's <laughs> interesting that Kona Blue was declassified on July 18, 2023, right after David Grush and the other whistleblowers came forward with their information on UFOs during the hearing with U.S. House members. Investigating UFO phenomenon particularly cases like Kona Blue, has always presented significant challenges, both for those directly involved in the investigations and the witnesses who come forward with their experiences. The inherent secrecy of government investigations, compounded by public skepticism and a lack of transparency, creates a difficult environment for investigators and witnesses alike. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. One of the primary obstacles faced by investigators was the level of government secrecy surrounding the investigation. Classified programs like Kona Blue operated under strict confidentiality, with much of the collected data and eyewitness reports remaining inaccessible even to those working within the investigation itself. Military personnel involved in the sightings were often required to sign non-disclosure agreements, preventing them from discussing their experiences publicly. This secrecy led to the suppression of potentially valuable information that could have shed light on the nature of the objects being seen. For investigators, this limited the flow of data and made it difficult to piece together a complete picture of what was happening. David Grush came forward with information from more than 40 first-hand witnesses alleging the U.S.
does indeed have a secret UAP reverse engineering and retrieval program. The Intelligence Community Inspector General, ICIG, found his claims credible and urgent. And when the ICIG later presented information about these claims to some members of Congress in a classified setting, Representative Jared Moskowitz tweeted, Based on what we heard, many of Grush's claims have merit. Although the Arrow Historical Report attempted to debunk the idea of a secret UAP program, many experts still have questions about the legitimacy and scope of the report. For example, although former Arrow director Sean Kirkpatrick said there were no first-hand witnesses, Christopher Mellon, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense, said he was shocked by that claim, noting that he himself has brought some first-hand witnesses to Arrow. And Florida Senator Marco Rubio has also stated that he's spoken to first-hand witnesses himself, basically saying Arrow is full of shit. In addition to secrecy, public skepticism was a persistent challenge. The concept of UFOs has long been associated with fringe conspiracy theories, and for many people, the idea of unidentified craft in the skies seemed far-fetched or outright laughable. This skepticism often undermined the credibility of witnesses, even when those witnesses were experienced and decorated military personnel or other highly trained professionals. Pilots, radar operators, and others who came forward with their accounts of strange sightings were frequently met with doubt, both from their peers and from the public. This skepticism not only discouraged witnesses from reporting their experiences, but also complicated the work of investigators who had to contend with the public's reluctance to take the phenomenon seriously. The lack of transparency surrounding the Kona Blue program and similar UFO investigations only deepened the frustration felt by both investigators and witnesses. Many researchers felt that the government was withholding critical information about the sightings leading to a culture of suspicion and mistrust. Despite multiple Freedom of Information Act requests, much of the documentation related to Kona Blue remained classified, or at the least heavily redacted. For the general public, this lack of openness only fueled conspiracy theories, as the government's refusal to release full reports led many to believe that the government was hiding something far more significant. Investigators within the program also faced the challenge of balancing scientific objectivity with the extraordinary nature of the claims. The reports of unidentified flying objects often defied conventional understanding of aerospace technology, and without physical evidence, Investigators struggled to formulate plausible explanations. Despite extensive efforts to gather data, the lack of solid, verifiable proof on the object made it difficult to draw definitive conclusions, leaving the entire investigation in a state of ambiguity. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. These combined challenges government secrecy, public skepticism, and the struggle for transparency created an environment in which investigating UFO phenomenon was an uphill battle. For those involved in the Kona Blue investigation, these obstacles made it nearly impossible to uncover the truth. While for witnesses, the experience of reporting a UFO sighting often came with personal and professional risk. The Kona Blue case, though ultimately inconclusive, 
had a significant impact on government policy and the broader approach to UFO investigations. While the program was officially canceled in 2012 due to a lack of merit and the utility of the deliverables, the reports gathered under Kona Blue continued to influence discussions around unidentified aerial phenomena within military and intelligence communities. Despite its closure, the case spurred important changes in how the U.S. government handles UFO sightings. Additionally, the Kona Blue Project helped pave the way for new investigations into UAPs. In the years following the program's cancellation, there were multiple theories on what happened with it. One was that the program actually continued on as a black program, probably going by a different name, and that this information was communicated to people like David Grush. Obviously, the government's not going to fucking admit this. Hell, if the black program was functioning correctly, pfft, we'd never find out about it. Other folks say that Kona Blue was canceled due to Department of Homeland Security being a young department still trying to establish itself and didn't want to get caught up in anything that might bring negative attention to it. Okay, so this kind of makes sense, but DHS never gave this reason in the documents they provided. DHS just said they didn't think that the program needed SAP, in other words, top secret status. So if you take the government at its word, <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? This one's not worth the powder to send it to hell. How about this? What if there was already a top secret program doing the same thing, somewhere deep in the bowels of the deep state? Once again, we'd have no way to know unless someone on the inside told us. Someone in the government who would be in a position to have knowledge of that type of program. <laughs> you know, it's interesting that the government immediately started trying to change the narrative after the 2023 hearing with Grush, which leads us back to the 2024 Arrow Report. In March 2024, they released the Arrow Report saying Kona Blue lacked merit. This is called softening the blow. Because a month after the Aero report was released, the DOD released the Kona Blue documents, 12 years earlier than they had originally planned to, according to the cover page on the report. Well, let's look at the bigger picture. Imagine that the government started investigating these strange fucks 70 plus years ago. We don't need to because the Aero report fucking confirms it. What part of the government was best equipped to do this type of work? The Department of Defense. The same Department of Defense that refused to admit that Area 51 even existed until 2013, even though <laughs> we all knew about it no later than the 1980s after the Bob Lazar interview on Coast to Coast. When the DOD investigated UFOs, they managed to physically recover some of these craft and reverse engineer parts of them, leading to massive breakthroughs in technology. Let's continue to imagine that the DOD, which is known for its black programs and massive budget overexpenditures, managed to bury this program for decades. The people involved, which includes both government and private corporations, get lots of power, money, and <sighs> virtually no oversight. I think this is what people are really talking about when they talk about a deep state in our government. Though Kona Blue itself did not yield concrete results, its legacy influenced the creation of more structured and transparent investigations into UFOs. The program underscored the importance of serious inquiry into unexplained aerial phenomena and contributed to a lasting shift in how these goddamn things are addressed 
by both the military and intelligence agencies. The Kona Blue program and the programs before and after it have had a profound impact on the public's perception of UFOs and government accountability. While the Kona Blue program was shrouded in secrecy and ultimately canceled due to a lack of significant findings, its existence revealed that UFOs or UAPs were taken far more fucking seriously by government agencies than the public was led to believe. The revelations surrounding the program, along with the growing number of whistleblowers like David Grush, have caused the public to question just how much the government knows about UFOs. More importantly, Kona Blue was a part of a larger movement toward greater transparency. The program, and others like it, spurred increased interest in UAP sightings, leading to the creation of new investigations, like the UAP Task Force. This shift reflects a growing recognition of the need for systematic approaches to studying these aerial phenomena. Although the Kona Blue program was eventually closed, it left behind a legacy of public interest and a demand for greater government transparency. Its story serves as a reminder that the truth about UFOs may be much more complex than many originally thought, and it continues to fuel the debate over how much the government knows and how much it has yet to reveal. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to tap that like button and subscribe. That way you won't miss out on more of my weird ass shit. On top of that, <laughs> I really appreciate it. I've also got some kick fucking ass merch, personally designed by moi. The link's in the description. I've got Scarinator t-shirts and tanks, Stay Creepy mugs, t-shirts, stickers, and all kinds of crazy cool shit. <laughs> Until next time, y'all keep it real, keep it chill, and stay creepy! Catch you on the flip. Thank you for watching and listening until the very end. You kicked total ass.